Hello YouTube, recently had a time to sit down and kind of watch some of the beta feedback streams with the various FDev developers and thought that I would do a video looking towards 2.3 and what are some of the things that FDev really needs to start addressing when it comes to Elite Dangerous. First up with multi-crew is also a logical time to go back and look at the wing structure and in particular the incentives for grouping up and flying together. There really needs to be group missions, wing missions, as well as multi-crew missions added to the mission board. It's not exactly fair that if I have a mission to go kill a notorious pirate lord for 2 million credits, that if I do ask one of my friends to wing up with me and join me on that expedition, that they essentially see nothing as a share of the reward outside of whatever the bounty or, or their fractional share of the bounty on that pirate ship at the time that they're killed. So at most, they get a few thousand, few tens of thousands of credits, and I walk away with two, 2.5 million credits between the ship and the mission and receive rank and all of that. So there needs to be missions added into the mission boards, into the system, or events, and it seems like things like the surface raids of bases and things like that are almost designed to be used where you have people going in on their SRV uh, buggies with air cover uh, to attack... Uh, any launch or security ships that launch and things like that. But there's no incentive or mechanic there in place that makes it feasible for me to reward my friends for coming in helping me do those activities. They share in the risk, they'll get bounties and things like that, but they don't get any real true profit or reward outside of just, hey, it's something to do and it is fun to do together. It would be nice if there would also be a reward and a meaningful reward in order for doing that as well. So that's the number one thing on my priority list that I hope FDev addresses in 2.3. Others will also mention that there needs to be improvements to the networking code, and I believe that this is true. However, apparently a bug that was causing a lot of the wing disconnects over the past couple of months is going to be solved and patched in 2.2. So cross fingers, hopefully a lot of those issues are resolved between that and the ability now to lock on to your wingman's next nav target, even if that system doesn't appear in your navigational systems list. Next up is a revamp of the scanning mechanic. Recently in beta 7 of 2.2, there was a bug that basically planets were not given a detailed surface map of them until they were scanned with a detailed surface scanner and then they would appear in the system map. Now, a lot of people don't like this. It's been a very big point of controversy and contention amongst the Elite Dangerous community with you know the far more casual players going, but this is just another time gate and makes it more grindy. I'm not so sure about that. I'm not entirely convinced that right now would be the time since it was a bug to change it. I think it should be reverted back to how it is currently working, but I think in the future with 2.3 that those mechanics should somehow find their way in there and consider it a little bit of a happy accident. Again, not going to be very popular with certain segments of the community, but overall sensor mechanics need to be given a substantial quality of life pass with a lot more depth and detail there for people to do, especially if this is going to become a station for somebody to occupy for 2.3 multi-crew. There needs to be a reason there to do it. Now, in the future, this could be, hey, you detail surface scan and you can find plots of minerals to then sit down and deploy, say, a mining rig or something like that that would collect resources while you're even offline and then somehow becomes a semi-persistent asset that maybe or a point of interest that other people could happen upon and discover and then maybe raid your stash and then you log on to find out that your mining rigs have been uh, destroyed and somebody else has made off with the goodies. Again, I'm not sure how many people, it's always going to be a point of contention if you increase or include mechanics such as that, but now with the ability to add persistent points of interest there, it'll be interesting to see how some of this shapes out. At the very least, there needs to be a way to scan for some of this stuff so that you're going around a planet and you want to say find a geezer or a geyser, as we pronounce over here on this side of the pan, pond, uh, or ruins or any other type of things. Those should be discoverable that are, so long as it's a persistent POI, should be discoverable via scanners in the next release. And I hope this is something that they take a look at and address in the upcoming uh, 2.3 patch. 
and I wouldn't expect to see it until after the first of the year. Ship naming. Now, the official comment on this for 2.3 was no comment. No comment means, well, we're seriously looking at it. Whether or not it'll be there or not, we're making no promises. I have a feeling that it will be, and the reason for this happens to be, I think, multi-crew. Because once you introduce multi-crew into the equation, the commander who owns the ship may not be the person piloting it. So instead of linking a ship identity to a commander, it would make start to make more sense to link that identity to the name of a ship. So if I'm flying around in the INS Dusty Fox, which is probably the name that I would uh, name my cutter, you would notice it's that Dusty Fox. But I may not necessarily be at the command of the helm. It might be one of my friends such as Bob or Sketch or Kratos or other people who are coming into the game and maybe want to fly a cutter before they decide to embark on the hours of grind it'll take to achieve rank and the credits necessary in order to purchase one themselves. So at that point, it becomes more of a notorious pirate crew or notorious combat crew or notorious trader or however you want to call it, and that ship. You're attacking that ship and not necessarily the player behind that ship. And how they handle that with death and rebuy mechanics and stuff like that, I think it's going to be very interesting to see. Next up is an overhaul of the crime and punishment system. 6,000 credit bounty for murdering another player is laughable at this point, especially when you can get a suicide winder and kill yourself a couple of times and really suffer no consequences for it. Now, they're talking about revamping the crime and punishment system. It is coming, whether it'll be coming in 2.3 or 2.4, we don't know. But it is, pardon the pun, on the horizon for horizons. Now, I do like the idea of a karma system that would probably revoke your docking privileges throughout civilized space at many starports and things of that nature. I think that that's a good addition. It would force pirate players more into the anarchy systems if they need to dock and repair and it would also severely limit their ability to outfit their ships as well there should be some sort of consequence there for engaging in that type of activities furthermore i'd like to see it to where the bounty that a player gets for killing another player in open or even in private group is the cost of the rebuy so if you kill a cutter that's worth or takes a 40 million credit rebuy you get a bounty placed on your head for 40 million credits. But the caveat here is it can be paid off after 7 days or 20 days or some gated time period. And, you know, it's going to cost you. If you kill somebody for 40 million credits, if you want that bounty off your head in 7 days, it's going to cost you 40 million credits. Or any time that you get killed, your bounty then gets reduced by the amount of your rebuy costs. So if you're flying a 6 million credit FDL, let's say rebuy cost or whatever it is these days, and you kill somebody that has a 40 million credit rebuy, you're going to have to die five or six times or seven times in order to essentially, quote, pay your debt to society. Or at least the, uh, the, the game community in this case, I think, is more apt. Those are a couple of ideas that I've heard that I particularly like. If you have ideas that you've heard or have ideas, period, on how this should work, put it into the comments section down below. Also, be sure to comment on the forums as well as Reddit as the dev community and the community management team at Frontier are seeking feedback for these very things. And there's a lot of good ideas out there. I certainly do not have a monopoly on ideas. Next up is PowerPlay. PowerPlay is just broken, horrible implementation and needs to be basically removed from the game, rebuilt, and added in at a later time and revamped into something else. Good news. They know it, and they're even saying we're looking at how to do this. But again, I don't expect that to be there for 2.3. This is more of a 2.4 wish list. And I'll probably end up doing a video, maybe several videos, over on how to fix this. But my basic point of contention is this. The basic mechanics of having to do indirect action in order to gain control via an NPC faction I think is the right way to do it for Elite Dangerous. Now, it's never going to satisfy the people who want to be able to take a direct action, aka get me and all my peeps together and my posse and all of our big ships on together on 2 o'clock in the afternoon and a Saturday afternoon and push into enemy territory and conquer it that way and have to engage direct. And the other way, only way to oppose that is for the other force 
to muster their troops and fight us directly in open PvP combat. Ultimately, there's a segment of the population that is their wet dream. And I hate to burst the bubble, but that's never going to be Elite Dangerous. I think Eve is somewhere over there, and it's going free to play if, you know, subscriptions is a big hang-up for you. You might want to go check it out, because that may be up more up your alley. The mechanics of having to compete over a system via the Group A does Mechanic 1 and Group B does Mechanic 2 in opposition, and then at the end of a week, a turn is calculated based on statistics of who did more, and then that determines the outcome of the fight. I actually have no problems with those mechanics. I just don't think that they're making any sense right now because it's not integrated into the background sim, and it's almost as though power play and the background sim function completely independently of each other, and it makes absolutely no logical sense. Just like, you know, you can be an imperial king and an admiral in the Federation fleet at the same time. That makes no sense. So the naval progression system, the background sim, and power play, all of those mechanics need to be rethought on how they can be integrated to work together as a cohesive function of gameplay instead of three separate mini-games, for lack of a better term, or as many people call it, three separate grinds that are really mutually exclusive of each other, are really don't ha are not interdependent on each other, and they probably should be. Good news is Frontier knows it, and they're going to be looking at revamping this stuff. And my suggestion would be this. Alien invasion happens. Suddenly the power play functions go, oh crap, you know what? We actually got to start working together in order to basically repel this invasion into uh, our inhabited bubble. Meanwhile, you set up a new system out in deep space somewhere, maybe around Colonia and Jacques Station, maybe outward at Beagle Point or some other little cluster in the galaxy, and you start marking it with NPC factions based on player wings, and then they duke it out with power play-like mechanics that are also integrated into the background sim uh, for control of those new systems to basically, hey, we need to move colonists from the bubble or refugees or whatever you want to call them out to our new areas in order to grow the you know, we start with a small little outpost, and then by doing this every week, it starts to grow our population, and then maybe we look into expanding into other systems, much like with the BGS works, and then if we run into another power or another player group out there, it springs up basically power play-like mechanics where one side's got to fortify and the other side has got to undermine, and at the end of a week, it determines who succeeds, who loses, I think something like that, if implemented out there, could be very exciting and a lot of fun to do and give, again, that kind of social interaction that I think that a lot of people have felt that Elite has been lacking over the course of the past year. I did participate in Power Play last year during the rise of ALD, uh, Arissa Ligivni Duvall to the Emperor, um, and that was kind of an interesting take and it was the first time that I really sat down and explored what power play was about and a lot of commanders working together and again that's the type of gameplay that Frontier I think seeks to foster if you listen back to a lot of the dev diaries and a lot of the things that David Braben himself has said Sir David Braben sorry uh, it is that he wants gameplay that is emergent that supports cooperative interactions with commanders as opposed to, you know, direct bunting of heads where, oh, I am going to interdict you, I'm going to kill you re repeatedly because I can, and look at me, I'm the big string, I'm the big bad internet bully that can do this, and why does nobody want to play with me? Huh? Huh? At any rate, I think that this would fit that type of model far better than the current implementation. So maybe I don't have to do another episode over power play. Uh, maybe I will, because this is buried so deep in the video, nobody's ever going to watch it. But if you have thoughts and ideas on how to make power play work that is better and more effective, put it down in the comment section below. I would love to hear it, and as would many other commanders out there. So basically, that's kind of my wish list for 2.3 and beyond. Those are the things that I see that are kind of most pressing that I think Frontier is ticking down on the amount of time they have left to fix those elements and get it working right. 
they don't have an unlimited amount of time. There are going to be other competing products hitting the market probably over the next two to three years. But I think that they're to the point now where, again, they've got the furniture there in the rooms. They're starting to fill them in. Now they're asking us, uh, you know, how should it be arranged? What kind of wallpaper should we put up? Or should we paint the wall? You know, and if so, what color? And, okay, maybe we can't go with hot pink tie-dyed, but, you know, we do have this nice blue or this nice red or this nice gray. Well, I guess gray isn't all that nice. But it's going to be better than the current beige. So would you rather see blue or red on the walls? Again, you're not going to get everybody to agree. Always the danger when asking the community. You're, and this is a great phrase I remember from my time in politics. No matter what you do, 20% of the people are always going to disagree with it. Always. So when you start looking at this, if 60%, 70%, you know, the, the good old rural um, utilitarianism say that this is a good idea, go and please the 60 to 70%. The other 20 to 30%, no matter what you do, they're never going to like it. That, that, that's just the nature of dealing with the public. So at any rate, I think I will leave this video, which has probably gone on a little too long here for this one. Be sure to leave your comments in the comment section down below. Tell me all the places I'm wrong. Tell me where I'm right. Give likes, give dislikes, share with your friends, and hit that subscribe button. Until next time, see you later.